Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Shortcake. And today's video will be everything that happened in the summer season. So let's get right into the video. So we wake up to the summer season and we go say hi to Emily and we get our cup of coffee and we start our day. Usually this is what I do now since I am a married lady, but after this day, you won't see this process. So you may notice that the farm looks a little bit or a lot of bit different and that's because me and Emily decided to change farms. That's right, I took everything down from the standard grandpa's farm and put all of my buildings onto this new farm layout. It took forever, so that's why everything seems a bit wonky right now, but that's okay because we're going to get your girl's farm fixed the way it's supposed to be. And thank you so much Robin because I will be stopping to buy some of those. And if you're wondering why the UI looks a little bit different with the clock, it's because that I do have a new zoom in feature and it kind of did something weird to my game which will be fixed in the later days. So right now I'm looking through the help wanted post to see who I can help because sometimes I don't have the items everyone's looking for. So I guess I'm helping Jody get a diamond while I wait for Robin's shop to open up. And while looking for Jody, I stumble upon Sam and Sebastian trying to figure out what genre of music they want their band to play. Hey lady, I was looking for you. Here's your diamond. And you're welcome. So after finding Jody, I head to Robin's because I needed to buy some battery packs and some other necessities. I stopped by Clint's shop because he has more things that he's selling. There's a mod that does an overhaul of Clint's shop and I buy almost everything <laughs> because I needed these things. They are so hard to come by. So while in the mines, I forgot that I accepted the wizard's quest to find a prismatic slime to get prismatic jelly. So let's go find it. It took a couple of tries by re-entering the same mine level to find the rainbow slime and we found it. I'm sorry slime, I, I don't mean to, but I need you. And he wasn't going down without a fight y'all. So after almost dying, we do get the jelly and we head to the wizard's tower to turn in the quest. His theme music has to be the best music in the game because it is so fire. I love coming in here just to listen to his theme music. So after coming from the wizard's tower, we head home and we start organizing this catastrophe of a mess. So. I start trying to figure out where I want my buildings. I'm very indecisive. So after not moving anything, because I don't know where I want everything to be at, we go to day two. So in day two, I tried to figure out where I want all of my farm buildings to be for this new farm layout. So I'm going to speed this part up because this is going to be a lengthy process. And now we see you guys in day three.
On day three, I start my morning by planting all of the seeds that I bought from Peter's shop. After running out of seeds for my plots, I decided to grab my Pegasus horse and take her into town to buy more seeds. Look how fast she goes. So after I buy my seeds from Pure Shop and some tree sapling seeds for the greenhouse, I decided to stop by the land for sale sign to see what they're selling. And it looks like they're selling a good amount of land. I might just purchase them. Maybe later. So back at the farm, I decided to plant all the seeds that I bought from Pierre's shop to fill in all the spaces that I didn't fill up. So after planting all of the seeds I have bought, I go inside of the greenhouse to check it out. It is so spacious now. There's so many rooms to explore. I have like tree spaces. I have extra plots for seasonal seeds and I'm just so excited to decorate. So while I'm here, I decided to replant all of my ancient fruit seeds because I lost them in the process of moving everything around. When you're modding certain things, you do tend to lose your items. For me, it was my fruit trees and my ancient fruit. So I'm just here um, planting some more of those seeds so I can get those going. Ta-da! Now I just need to hurry up and rush into bed for day four. See you then! On day four, I meet Emily outside while drinking a cup of coffee and I greet her for the morning to see what she's up to. She fed all the animals so I wouldn't have to do it, so that was awesome. So after greeting all of the animals and greeting Emily, I decided to head down to my slime hutch to figure out how I want my bee houses to look because somehow I lost them. I don't know how, but it happened, so I'm redoing it right now. And here's how it looks. And one, two, three, all the flowers are bloomed. Look at that. So after setting up the bee houses, I decided to stop at Pierre's to see what I can buy. And I decided not to steal from his shop because he was there. So after me trying to get free items from Pierre by stealing, I stopped by the schoolhouse to check it out. If you remember in the last one, it was all broken down, but I didn't really feel like fixing it up. So I downloaded the lazy version. So everything's fixed and ready to go for all the kiddos and the teacher. And it looks really cute in there. So after visiting the schoolhouse, I dropped by to see Krobus to see how he's doing and to buy more of those magical tree saplings that I really love. And yes, I'm still saving up for the return scepter. I'm trying. <laughs> I really want that scepter because it would be so easy to return home when need be. So after leaving the town and coming back to my house, I decided to see if I can find my grandpa's shed because I haven't been able to find it. And I take a detour and it's actually there. So I clear up all of the space and to get rid of all the debris just so I can get inside to see if my progress have saved from my other farm. So after putting in the last battery packs for the grandpa shed, we complete it. So all we have to do is wait till the next day for Robin to see how she's going to fix it up for us. Good night, Emily. Sweet dreams. So after leaving the farmhouse, we are met by Robin. She tells us that she got all of the items that we gathered for Grandpa Shed, and it will be done tomorrow. Yay! So after we clean up the rest around Grandpa's shed to be ready for tomorrow, we stop by in town to get one of the deeds to one of the lands that's for sale. So after getting lost exploring more of the new areas that I added into my game, I stop by the Adventurers Guild to see how Celia is doing and to level them up a little bit. Or a lot, because we need to get friends with them. <laughs> Thank you. 
so after leveling silly up i decided to stop by the dwarf to see what he's doing and i end up getting lost and i guess i end up in the ginger island i did not want to come here yet so i left and went back home As I pick up all of the ancient fruit that has grown overnight, I see that it's getting late and I just spend the night in the tent. I hope Emily's not mad at me. Sorry, Emily, but there's still work to be done. So after an unrestless night in my tent in my greenhouse, I finish up picking up all the ancient fruit to turn into wine and so I can sell for money. So as I come out of my house, Xenia and Silly meet me at the door and to tell me that Silly is ready to be shown to the world. I'm so excited for them. I am super proud of you, Silly. So after talking to them, I get a mail saying that my land is mine and I unfortunately get another message from Demetrius saying that he wants a puffer fish. Y'all already know or seen what happened in the last one. I do not want to deal with this man. So after checking the mail, we go into town and we see that everybody is waiting for the big reveal of Sealy. So let's go. So after welcoming Silly into our little community, I go into the greenhouse to plant all of the trees that I bought, all the special trees I should say, that I bought from each store and I get those growing. So after leaving the greenhouse, I head to town and I get a cutscene where Xenia is trying to get silly back home and he doesn't want to go he wants to go with me so let's watch
So Celia is going to be moving in with me. All I have to do is give Robin 100 pieces of wood so she can build him some extra space and some extra room. So yay for Silly. So finally, after that whole cutscene, even though I slice it up a bit, I head on over to Pierre's to buy some slime heart seeds because that's what you get after you complete Silly's quest line. And they sell for a lot of money. So I buy a lot of them. And I mean a lot to where my money dwindles down. <laughs> So after shopping, we stopped by Grandpa Shed to check out what Robin did and we meet her inside. Look how spacious that is. That's insane. So Robin is letting us know that we can use this part of the building to age wine with, for the cask. But I don't do that. I do add cask later, but I use it more of decorational purposes. So after checking out the bottom part, I head upstairs to see there's a big plot of land that I can place some crops down. And here I do plant my slime hearts here. And there we go. So I put a chest down to put the extra seeds in here. Just so I don't have to keep going into my storage chest trying to find them. Because I do have a lot of seeds in there. So after placing all the seeds upstairs in the crop area, I come downstairs and I start decorating Grandpa's farm just to make it look nice. And like I said, I do not use these casts right now, so this is just for decorational purposes. So here's a speed build of that. As the sun slowly crept into the sky, it filled the morning air with warmth. Sounds of birds in harmony And you there right next to me So after leaving the house, Robin stops by to tell me that she wants me to notice something. And that's Silly's 
little basement area. So we're going to go see Silly with Robin and see how the rooms look. My baby Silly is super stoked that he has a room, like an actual room. And he's actually also excited because he's with me. I'm his favorite person, I want to say. So after everyone leaves, I get to work on this top part because I don't want Silly to just not have anything up here to look at. So here's a little speed build of that. So after finishing Silly's little basement top part of his room, I decided to decorate a little bit of the greenhouse. It's nothing too crazy, I just do some pavements with some mushrooms just to make it a little cute and pastel and fairy tale like So I can mark off the greenhouse as being decorated. It came out super, super cute and I love it. So nothing else really happened on day seven. So I'm going to sleep, call it a night, and I'll see you guys in day eight. Day eight, I head to the beach because I need to get a lot of fish so I can make some fertilizer for this quest that I'm doing. And literally this took all day, all of day eight to do because I needed 50 fish to craft 50 fertilizer for this person it took all day like and i just had to speed up the process because i didn't have time so after crafting all of the fertilizer for susan i thought her house was going to be open but it wasn't so now i have to wait till the next day to give her her fertilizer so before I rush into bed, I sell all of the goods that I have in my inventory and I head to sleep and I will see you guys in day nine. And with all of the fishing, I leveled up to level nine. Finally. Oh my gosh. So on day nine, I meet Emily outside and she's telling me that she fed and watered everybody and how she is super excited that we have Silly. So after talking to Emily for the morning, we head over to Susan's house because we need to drop off all of the fertilizer that we made the night before. Susan, you're welcome because this took a while to do. But look at that gold. So after turning in the quest for Susan, we stop by the beach because we need to fish up a puffer fish for Demetrius. And after a little while, we finally got it. Demetrius, don't ask for nothing else, please. So after fishing up the fish, we have to look for him, thinking that he was in his house because he's always there, but he wasn't there that time. So we found him by the water fountain. So after we find Demetrius, we just head over to the bar to see what everyone's doing and we get a cutscene with Gus sharing his omelette that he made for everybody with the eggs that I gave him.
So after a long day of running around to get everybody their things, we finally call it a night. See you guys in day 10. So waking up on day 10, I noticed that we have a thunderstorm and I got a mail saying that I have the second deed to the other farm and that our potluck is tomorrow. So hopefully I can bring something better than last year. So before I actually leave the farm for today, I put out my lightning rods because I can get batteries when it starts to thunder. So that's what I'm doing right now. So after a little bit, I start to decide where I want all of my trees to go because this will determine where my pathing would go. Um, usually on like um, a farm that has rivers and terrain, I don't use the regular pathing. I use like the stone and the crystal path to make it more of like a natural feel. So I'm going to speed this process up because it's just me placing trees and moving trees. And I think I, I don't know if I paint them yet, but um, I'm just going to speed this up, put some music over it because this is also a long process. And I will see you guys in day 11. Crept into the sky, it filled the morning air with warmth and life. Sounds of birds in harmony, and you there, right next to me. Storms on by your side Through days of warmth I'm by your side Like the stars and the moon in the nighttime sky I'm by your side starts and I'm just hanging around and speaking to everybody before I actually put something inside of the pot and they're silly hi silly how are you doing today 
so after talking to the rich side folks i come back and put a iridium cheese block in the pot and i'm ready to start the luau so here we go So after having a great day with friends, we head home and we sell some stuff for the night so we can make some profit for in the morning. See you guys in day 12. Good night, Emily. Sweet dreams. On day 12, I spent all of my time in the Skull Caverns while the rest of the time. Um, nothing really happened in the morning until now, so that's why my time is frozen, just so I can get some time in the mines and i actually got up to a hundred and something but that's when i had gotten the keys message about if i can meet him at the level 100 and i'm like are you serious <laughs> so this is me just killing things and just trying to get as low as possible until i either die or i get tired of <laughs> being in the skull cavern so after my excursion in the Skull Caverns, I head back home to organize all the loot I have gotten back there just before I go to bed. So actually before I do go to sleep, I do remember that I put some pathing down just to start curving my way upwards because I did the ones coming from the farm plots, but I didn't do anything else to the pathing. So I'm just doing this before I actually call it day 12 and I'll see you guys in day 13. On day 13, I start my morning by heading over to Clint's because I need to open up all of my geoids that I got from the Skull Caverns. So after I leave Clint's, I head down to the museum to see which ones I can donate. After I finish buying animals from Marnie, I get a cutscene with Shane giving some little updates about his health and that he's not drinking anymore, which is so good. I'm so proud of him. So nothing really else happened on day 13. I'm just at the farm decorating. I'm trying to get my farm back to normal and back decorated as fast as possible. So that's why my time is frozen because it feels so empty. Like I need things to be on my farm. So that's what i do the rest of day 13 and i'm gonna speed it up cut it up and i will see you guys in day 14. <laughs>
So on day 14, I leave the house and I greet Emily because she's always up early in the morning. And I see it's a beautiful sunny day today. So I'm just going through the farm, checking out how everything looks, getting stuck as usual. And it's coming out so, so good. So, so pretty. So as I head up to see what Susan's up to, I get a cutscene with her showing me her giant fruit. So here it is. So while inside, she gave me her most valuable fermentation method and it boosts my mead, my beer, and my pail to be more valuable. So thank you, Susan. So after hanging out with Susan and with her giant crops, I accept the quest for Gus and he needs a diamond. So after spending a lot of time on the farm decorating, I completely forgot about Gus and his diamond. So tomorrow we will give that to him. But for now, we're going to call it a night. So good night, everyone. So at the start of my day 15, I talk to Emily and she gives me a surprise star drop. After that surprise star drop, I start to decorate more of my farmland just so there's no empty spaces. So after all of the decorating, all of the planting of the giant crops and mushroom trees, I finally head to Gus and give him his diamond. I'm so sorry Gus, I, I know you've been waiting for a long time for this. <laughs> I have things to do, okay, I'm sorry. So after placing some soda machines around, I get a cutscene with Linus telling me how it's hard for him to trust people and how I became one of his closest friends. So after he takes me inside, he teaches me how to make wild bait. And this is really good because I can put all of these in my crab pots because they use a one bait per pot. So after coming back to the farm, I get a visit from the witch and I want to say she puts a void egg in my chicken coop. So that's fun. Thanks witch. I didn't need that. I have enough. So on the start of day 16, I get a visit from Gus and he brings me a jukebox for being great friends with him. And I'm shocked because he caught me stealing. <laughs> so. Thank you, Gus. Anyway, I appreciate the offer. So after the Gus encounter, I head over to the witch because I can buy some stuff from her now. Uh, she's selling giant flowers and giant crops. And she's also selling this shovel that helps you move giant crops without you breaking them. So now I have a reason to come over to the witch's hut. So after finishing up at the witch's hut buying some giant things... I'm still debating on how I want my house to be. I've been trying some different alternate textures where you can change your house and I just haven't found the perfect one. So you might be seeing a lot of changes to my house during the summer season. And of course I changed it again. It comes in two colors. It comes in pink and red and I'm trying to rock the red right now, but it changes. Don't worry. I change it again. <laughs> So the rest of day 16, I finished decorating some areas that I didn't get to and I have my time frozen just so I don't have to rush and try to finish up an area. So for the rest of the time before I go to sleep, I'm searching for the perfect song on the jukebox that Gus gave me just so I can hear it playing when I exit and enter the farm and also when I'm doing stuff on the farm, I can hear the song that I chose. And I think I found the perfect song. This is the song of the moon jellies. And I love this song so much. So as I go to rest my head for day 17, I get a visit from the fairy. So day 17 was just me taking some mods out and replacing some mods. 
so for one i got this cute little fairy garden um mod and i'm just placing them around my farm just to give me that more of that fairy tale like aesthetic and then i also downloaded a mod that changes your um your obelisk and they came out really cute they're like little terrariums and they have the little places inside of them so i decided to change those two so i finally completed all of my farm i'm just putting down some lighting and some more um, pathing just so it won't be so dark i did download the dynamic nighttime so now i can see the stars in the water and it's so gorgeous So I finally tackled the two rooms that are in my house that are empty plus Emily's room. So I'm going to speed it up for day 18 and I will see you guys in just a little bit.
So after finishing decorating the house, I stopped by Caroline's house and I enter her tea room and she talks to me about how it's so peaceful in there and she always have a cup of tea every day and that's like her stress free space like this is her space where she can get away from all the noise outside of this room and that's so nice so after the carolines cut scene about her tea making i head over to the movie theater and i can finally play the crane game because the guy's not standing there and this game is so hard to play you guys it's very rigged i need spongebob to help me play this game so after many failed attempts, I finally grabbed one and I tried to go after another one, but it ended up dropping in the bush. I was so upset. Like, are you serious? Come on. And then I tried to grab it again and it didn't work out. Oh my gosh. Y'all see the dynamic lighting happening? It is so good. I think this is like sunset. It is gorgeous. But when it gets dark, it gets super, super dark. So after coming from the town, I head back home just to put some lighting in because I saw some dark places. And then after that, I just call it a day. So the area that Lewis gave me at the beginning of the game, I finally turned it into a tree farm. Um, this will be where I put my tappers at and connect it to a chest so I don't have to keep coming back and forth checking it. So here's the finished product. I put the tappers on the trees and I actually had to check it to make sure it did work and it does because I put flooring and I didn't know how flooring works with the chest and it's completed so after i finish here i head home and i call it a night but before i do that i do come back to add lighting because it is super dark over here and it makes it a little better like you can actually see where you're going and, and what you're doing inside of this gated area I also been trying to figure out why these aren't collecting in the honey chest, but I think it's just because it's not pointing in the direction of the um, of the tapper, or maybe I just can't use plank flooring with the automate. I don't know, but I just leave it as is. I also didn't make it into the bed in time, but at least I fell asleep in the house, right? So on day 20, I start my day in the secret woods because I need to get some more hardwood, I want to say for Robin. So after leaving the secret woods, I head over to the vineyard to see what all the commotion is about. And I see there's a plaque like there was in the community center, but this one's different. I can't read this one, so I have to go get help from the wizard. So after leaving the vineyard, I meet the wizard in the forest by his tower and he tells me that there is a lot of activity surrounding me. So after the wizard tries to read the scroll but can't translate, he calls on his colleague and she tells me that the Junimo wants star fruit, 200 to be exact. So after the meeting with the wizard and his colleague, I head over to my greenhouse and what do I do? I plant that baby 200 star fruit because that's what he requested. So after a long night of planting, I head home before it becomes 2 o'clock and I call it a night. See you guys in day 21. On day 21, I walk out of my house to see that Mayor Lewis sent me a message saying that he needs truffle oil. 
Louis, why do you need truffle oil? And yes, I changed my house again. I really don't know what type of house I want my farm to have. I'm just trying everything, you guys. So after changing my house again, I head into the secret woods and I chop down some more of these tree stumps because I still need hardwood. So after finishing in the secret woods by taking down all the tree stumps, I head over to the new area that I've been talking about and it does have tree stumps with hardwood so I do cut those down as well. So after doing some chopping, I head over to town and I check the help wanted post and I see that Demetrius wants a prismatic shard. I guess I give him one. I mean, it is money. Look how much money he's going to give me. So let's go give him that shard. And every time I need to find him, he's always by this water fountain. I always go to the house thinking he's there. But nope, he's chilling by the water fountain. So after playing hide and seek with Demetrius, I head over to Grandpa's shed to plant more of my slime heart seeds. So after finishing up at the Grandpa's shed, I head over to the greenhouse to pick up all the star fruit that the Junimo and the vineyard needs. And all done. Good night everybody. On day 22, I turn in all of the star fruit that the Junimo requested. Here you go. After dropping off the 200 star fruit at the Junimo, I decided to give away all of the extras. So it was only a couple. So since everybody's at the community center, I decided to steal everything that Pierre has. Why not, right? It's free. <laughs> so after stealing from Pierre, a little later, I decided to grow some giant crops in my greenhouse. And I used a shovel to pick them back up and I just place them everywhere and then I tap them with the tappers. So after placing those giant crops that I grew, I decided just to walk around before I hit the bed and just enjoy the scenery. As I head to the summit, I see Marlon paying respects to his friends that passed away while keeping the town safe. He also tells me that I am very honorable and I get to be in more of their meetings at the guild. So that's exciting. I can't wait for that. So I start to work on Andy Seller. He needs all of these items, even though I'm pretty sure he can get them himself. But you know what? I help him out. So I'm trying to figure out how much of each item that I have to give to him. And the only thing that I needed was stone. So I'm just buying the stone from Robin because I don't have time to go mining. I don't feel like it. <laughs> so let me teleport back to his farm. So after giving Andy all of the items he needs for his cellar, I head back home for the night and I switch out all of the windows and retexture them before I call it. On day 24, I walk in on Xenia and her dad fighting because he wants to take her back home and how he pretty much doesn't respect her decision. But the thing is, he is scared of losing her like how he lost his wife. And after the whole ordeal, her dad understands that she can become anything she puts her mind to while in Pelican Town and asks if he can come visit once in a while, just to see her and Marlin. So after diffusing the situation between Xenia and her dad, I head back to Aurora Vineyard to find a Junimo named Apple. Apple, I thought you were going to fix up the vineyard. On day 25, I stopped by the grandpa shed to see how the slime hearts are doing and they're doing really well. It's almost time to pick them. 
So after a long day of hiking through the woods to get to the Junimo huts, it took me forever. It took me all day to get here because I got lost and I kept getting lost. So I don't get a lot. I just get a few things that I might need for the museum and then I just head home. Emily, can you believe I got lost? On day 26, I head to the museum to donate the items that I got from the Junimo forest. I really need to find some dinosaur eggs to hatch. So after running through the rain trying to get to the greenhouse, I placed down my statue harvesters. This is a mod that allows Junimos inside of your greenhouse to harvest all of your crops and your fruit trees. On day 27, I plant this ancient fern that I found in the secret woods and it gave me ancient fiber when it was grown. So I turned that into wine and you can't age it. It's just, you just sell it as is. So that was interesting. So after I finish up in the greenhouse, I meet Andy at his house and he thanks me for helping him with the cellar and he shows me how it looks. After I meet up with Andy, I see Pam crying because she still hasn't changed with the drinking, but she's trying. She's doing all that she can. So nothing else happened on day 27, so I'm going to call it a night. So as I wake up in the morning on day 28, we met with Emily and she tells me that she needs 200 fibers. I don't know what she's planning on making, but hopefully it's something good. So I also added this recolor that changes the way your map looks and I also changed the way the bus looks. Look how cute it looks, you guys. I love it so much. I need to decorate the bus stop. So after we leave town, we head over to Apple to see what he's up to and he gives us a stone as a gift. I don't know why, but I guess, thanks Apple. Wow, there's more of Apple's friends joining. So after I go back inside, I met with Apple showing Peaches all his starfruit trees. And they're meeping together. <laughs> it's so cute. So after going all the way home, we get this message saying that something's happening in the Junimo Woods. I wonder what's going on. And there's so many of them, y'all. Look at them. Some of them, well, all of them don't have names except Apple and Peaches. But they're talking, but we can't understand what they're saying. So after that cutscene, we head back to the vineyard to find out that there's so many of them just gathered around inside. And Mr. Bear's there as well. I didn't know they were friends with the bear. And then Apples invites us to see the starfruit tree. And they're all celebrating her. Look how big it is. But as soon as I reach my farm, Apples invites me to his party. But then he tells me that all of the other Junimos think it was a mistake making it his home. So he cancels the party until Bear shows up. And this is what happens. Apples was super excited to see Bear. Bear even brought Apples' favorite food. That's one special friend. After having a blast with Apple, we make it to the Moon Jellies event. Thank you so much for coming along with me on this summer journey, and I can't wait to see you all in fall. So like always, like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, Bye.